Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against our new opponent, Hartwig. This is turn number two or three with Hartwig in charge, and uh, things have been have been getting going. Uh, so that's where we're uh, looking at the replay right now for April 27th, 1942, as we move into... Uh, late spring, I guess mid spring right now, but it feels like late spring uh, to see kind of what what uh, Hartwig might have in store for us. I don't know that anything big happens this turn. I guess we'll see. I actually haven't looked at the replay until this. Uh, oh, okay. Well, I'd been waiting for it for a while. Uh, we're finally seeing a Japanese coastal bombardment of our forces at Batavia. This has the potential to greatly reduce our supplies at the base and rapidly cause the collapse of the defense in the Dutch East Indies. So this is a pretty big move by the Japanese. I'm surprised there's no battleships. I guess he probably just hasn't been able to get them there quickly enough. Maybe the cruisers will help soften things up before the battleships come in and, and sort of nuke things in a second run. I doubt he's got any AKEs in position yet. Uh, so maybe this is a smart move where he can bombard with the cruisers to kind of get people's heads down and then come in with battleships in a turn to keep a more consistent bombardment going. You can see it was just two Japanese heavy cruisers bombarding here. They inflicted 61 casualties, one squad destroyed, five disabled, and three non-combatants. So they definitely didn't nuke the place, uh, but they, they did disable a reasonable amount of troops there in that first attempt. Meanwhile, we did have a Dutch submarine here fired some torpedoes at, I assume, the same task force, or maybe an ASW task force here. Uh, the torpedoes missed, but the Japanese have returned fire with depth charges here, uh, claiming severe damage to the Dutch sub. Uh, we'll have to see how this, uh, how this, how this works. Machiavelli, uh, XTRG was the first opponent, then we did Rainbow Slash, uh, then we did Lodric. And now we're on to Hartwig. So uh, we're on to our fourth opponent. Um, but Hartwig has been playing War in the Pacific longer than all of those other three opponents put together. He's been playing since like 2006, 2007 ish, pre AE days, pre Admiral's Edition days. So uh, I would I would think we have our we have a good opponent here. Uh, eight eight hits on the Dutch sub, heavy damage by these Japanese submarine or d destroyers. Damn it. Damn it. No gurgledy gook, so the sub didn't sink at least. All in the same campaign. Yep, all those opponents in the same campaign that we find ourselves in. Uh, it's too bad, too, if that sub's crippled beyond, uh, beyond salvage because the Dutch are the only ones with decent torpedoes right now. Well, the, I don't know. Maybe the British have decent torpedoes, but we have, like, two British subs. Um, so we'll have to see what... Uh, what uh, comes of it. Uh, Sultan, I believe this is a variation of the Kamikaze map mode, I, map mod. I don't think it's a current map mod for anything. I think it's been um, uh, surpassed by newer versions of the map. Uh, I honestly got the map somehow by mistake. Okay, we've got some Japanese fighters sweeping over Rangoon. Um, so Hartwig's already stepping up the pressure on several places. Nothing disastrous there but he's doing some photo recon here over Rangoon as well so a much more active Japanese opponent it would seem uh, than some of our previous opponents uh, Lodrick was active but I think he was highly localized he did not um, do things in places where his main his main force wasn't concentrating I guess you would say it seemed like he kind of put every all his eggs in one basket Hartwig seems to be more thorough so far based on my initial impressions in, uh, in the way that he's playing. I, I'll have to look it up, Sultan, and, and I can post a link in the Discord, uh, but I don't know that it's a current one. I got it some, like, it, XTRG said, here's the map mod I'm using, so he sent me a link for a dom download. I downloaded it, and then I was told that, like, somehow the version I was using was slightly different than the one he was using, and then he updated it, like, two or three more times, and I never touched it. So I really don't know. I'd have to, I'd have to take a look. I guess I could always upgrade, up, upload my art assets and then share them with someone else. That 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 could be doable. 
All right, so we've got Japanese bombers at Batan here. They hit the runway. We were running some supply in there as a reminder, so we'll have to see if anything got in there. But uh, I think I was told, and then we've also got our own bombers going into Savi. I was trying to hit the Japanese troops there. It uh, looks like we're hitting the runway. Uh, we've got a reasonable amount of bombers flying out of Pago Pago. Should give the pilots some experience, if nothing else. Hitting the supply dump, hitting the runway again. 15 Japanese casualties, two squads disabled. Four runway hits, one airbase hit. Um, and does it tell me what I'm bombing? It says it's the 51st Naval Guard Unit. That appears to be all that's there. We'll have to take a look at that, but that's some good intel to have. Meanwhile, we've got 22 Warhawks going in as well and strafing. Maybe that's not the best use of the Warhawk. You can see we already suffered a couple of casualties to, uh, to uh, flak. I didn't tell them to come in low, though, so I didn't tell them to fly in at 100 feet. Yeah, they're coming in at 10,000 feet. They dive down to 100 to bomb. With I thought they were supposed to be dropping 500 pounders, which it looks like they did, but it claims we lost one to flak. Probably not worth the pilot losses to a, to a frontline fighter squadron, but nothing like the disaster that XTRG had at, uh, at Pearl Harbor. Another sweep, I guess, of uh, fighters over Rangoon. Another nine Oscars here in the PM phase. Second rate of another nine, 31,000 feet. So he's, uh, he's he's testing us out. We don't have any of our fighters forward at the moment in Burma. So we I don't know if we want to try and cap trap him or see what we can do there, uh, but it might not be a bad idea. Okay. I don't know if I'd say they're doing better in China than expected, Neuhauser. What I, the way I would describe that is Japan is doing better than historical in China. But a lot of Japanese players can roll China pretty easy, so it's sort of a divergence between reality and the game. All right, so we've got a, a battle over Batavia. It looks like Japan decided to sweep over Batavia with zeros out of Palembang, where we saw they had redeployed... Uh, the 48 fighters or so from one of their carriers to Palembang. So we've got a, an air battle going on here where we're heavily outnumbered. Zeros are diving on us. We've got Hurricanes and Warhawks in the cap. The Hurricane is actually a pretty good dogfighter against the Zero, um, but the uh, the Warhawk is pretty heavily outclassed in, in certain scenarios. It really kind of depends on the engagement scenarios. I didn't set up a layered cap, so that's going to hurt us a bit. The hurricane should be at higher altitude, but I'm not sure it is. We are getting... Actually, that one said it was diving on the zero, so it'll be interesting to see um, what uh, what comes of this battle here. Quite a bit of action. I was not expecting this much action on this turn. So let's fast forward through there. Japanese fighters get through. We claim one zero. They claim one hurricane. We'll have to see what the actuals are on that. That would be a pretty... I'm okay with any neutral air engagement that attrits Japanese pilots because any aircraft that goes down over Batavia is going to be an MIA or a uh, POW or a KIA uh, given the uh, given it's a friendly base for us whereas our pilots have a much higher chance of being recovered plus it's a fairly long flight back for the Japanese from uh, Batavia so there's always the risk of operational losses Japanese carrier situation, Machiavelli, is that uh, they haven't lost any carriers to our knowledge. Uh, we did put two torpedoes into, into the Hiryu maybe like a week ago. So they've got at least one flat top out of action. Um, it was one of the big torpedoes and one of the sort of medium-sized torpedoes of the Dutch. Fair bit of damage, internal explosion, fuel explosions. Uh, fog of war, I think, is wrong. It's telling us it sank, but it was in the Singapore hex, so I don't think it sank. Uh, but certainly out of action for a while. All right, so we've got another Japanese bombardment attack at Batavia. They started bombarding their last turn, and it looks like five Japanese guns were lost. Wow, okay, so we destroyed two guns and three disabled in counter-battery fire. Meanwhile, ten casualties on our end, one disabled squad, one vehicle lost. That's a pretty favorable bombardment result for us. Japanese bombardment attack at Clark Field against the main Allied force there. They started that last turn as well. It's like the last two opponents I had kind of just paused their actions there. They didn't do a lot. Um, but you can see here the bombardment didn't really do anything. We didn't counter battery with anything. 
uh, pretty neutral result. I wonder if that's going to tie up what limited supplies we have. I would imagine that'll, in, that'll increase our supply run rate, I would think. Which is going to be a problem in Bataan because we don't have... Um, we don't have a sufficient supply there, and there's no way I'm going to bring in enough via air to keep more than one or two units running. Okay, so Tijilap, uh, the one unit we had left there is destroyed. Japanese attack at Porto Princia on the southwest tip of the Philippine Islands. That'll also fall uh, to the Japanese here with one unit destroyed. It's funny, allied units lost. One ground unit destroyed, no casualties? <laughs> So what was that? Like a paper administrative unit? The second PI base force does not exist. Okay. Allied shock attack here in central China. One of our troops stumbled into a Japanese formation of two divisions and a brigade. Good luck. Unit not destroyed yet. Anyway, we'd be better off if they were destroyed in that location so we could regenerate them at Chongqing. I think these are the guys that had been sitting at uh, Yicheng for a while that we were trying to move southwest to get back in contact with our forces, so better off if they die. Okay, expanding some fortifications at Molman, which we had just taken back the other day, so Molman is up to level one forts right away. They don't do a ton, but it's better than nothing. And SS Sailfish, I think, is beginning upgrades. Some of the S-boats are beginning upgrades at Sydney, being taken out of commission. And I think that's probably about it for this turn. So we will jump out of here, and then we'll, uh, we'll get into the turn here in just a second so we can take a look at, uh, at what's going on here. Ooh, oh, that's right. We got the uh, Fleet Carrier Illustrious this turn. Okay, so first thing, let's take a look at the intel screen here. We can see one Japanese air-to-air -air loss, three flak losses, and three op losses. We lost four ops, two flak, two air-to-air. -air. Take a look, it looks like there's three KI-15 babs lost to flak. Uh, three zeros lost. That's actually a pretty nice number there. One air-to-air, -air, two to ops losses. I'm guessing those were all operating over Palembang. Uh, meanwhile, we lost two Warhawks and two Hurricanes. Two to Flak, those are probably over Savi. Two to Air to Air over over uh, Batavia. One Ki twenty seven eight lost probably in a training accident. It's a it's an ops loss. One Pby five Catalina. Two DC twos. One and one. I don't I don't know how they're different, but it says one DC two, one DC two, one Catalina one. Okay, so seven to eight. We take a look at top pilots here. We lost two KIA. I don't think any of our aces. I don't think any of our aces were engaged. Um, they're all in Burma anyway. Um, one MIA in the Dutch squadron with four kills. That might have been this turn. Um, yeah, but... New Caledonia is so far south, Machiavelli, that it's going to be hard for them to supply. It's It very may well be more of a liability than an asset. All right. Meanwhile, let's see. Batavia went had 40-some thousand supply. Still has 40-some thousand supply. I don't think they did any supply damage there last turn. Naval bombardment looks to have perhaps slowed down the building of the level 5 forts. It's at 26%. I'd have to double check and see what it was last turn. The troops there sitting on 1100 AV. No one looks super disrupted or anything like that. Again, a cruiser bombardment's not going to do too much damage, especially just with a handful of them. Um, but it may increase their fatigue or disruption, although most of those levels are pretty low. Morale's not great there either, but I guess we'll have to see what the Japanese have coming for us uh, in the following turns. Uh, if we see battleships or other things like that coming in. Maybe they did set up an AKE here at uh, Kiljadi because these cruisers say they're moving west. So if they're moving back and forth in like a shuttle bombardment, that could be something to keep an eye on. Um, northwest for these light cruisers. Patrol boats moving southeast. So it looks like he's pulling back the patrol boats, which had been trying to clear those subs in the Strait of Malacca. Um, did we get a Dutch sub out of there? 
Or did it sink? We had a Dutch sub that got depth charged at Batavia, right? Looking for uh ship sunk last turn. Did we lose anything? Doesn't say we lost a Dutch sub. Doesn't say we lost a Dutch sub here either. Oh, did it go into port? It went into port. So, these guys are pretty wrecked. Um, not sure I want them sitting in port and repairing where they're likely to get destroyed by a, a bombardment. But 53 flood damage is pretty bad. Cruise speed of zero of three knots, which gives them zero hex. So they basically don't move. Maybe one hex, I think, is like the minimum moving per turn. But these guys are in rough shape. No real nearby base to move to uh, to replenish or anything like that. I mean, in theory, maybe we can make some emergency repairs, but that's not a good situation for that, that Dutch sub to find itself in. Meanwhile, the supply in the Philippines continues to be bad. Um, we're at 3,200 of a required 7,400 per month. Uh, we did fly some supplies into Bataan, I believe, last turn. Not enough to even make any kind of noticeable dent anywhere. I think the, I calculated it out to like 20 a day. Um, our B-17s and Hudsons are flying up from here. And our B-17s flying out of Tuyan. Uh, we did also get more, more B-17s. Uh, I believe at least one more was repaired at Batavia. So if we take a look here, this B-17 unit is going to transfer up to Mandalay, which is where its parent unit is located, so they'll merge there. Not sure how many more are left behind here. Looks like we've got another nine B-17s chilling on the tarmac of uh, Batavia, which is not great if he's going to keep bombarding us. I don't think the airport or port had any permanent damage. It all got repaired, so that's good. But, uh, yeah, if he bombards those damaged aircraft, they could definitely get destroyed. They haven't made an attempt on Rangoon yet. They did fly some cap over Rangoon this turn. We didn't have any fighters there uh, to stop anything. Um, looks like we still have a fair bit of supply there and also fort at Mole Mine. Uh, we've been able to get Rangoon's fortifications up to level 3. We're almost actually to level 4. But also working on Pegu's fortifications, which are at 3, more than halfway to level 4. Um, it would be nice to really build up the forts in a lot of these bases around here. We're already 22% of the way to level two forts at Mole Mine, where we have the bulk of our striking force here. Um, the Japanese have a lot of support units that we pretty badly wrecked in our counterattack at Mole Mine. I'm going to guess it's going to take them a while longer to get any kind of striking force up there. So we probably are safe from a land attack there for a while, but uh, still a ways away from um, any kind of chance to win at uh in in uh, burma but uh the japanese haven't really i mean burma has not been threatened in any meaningful way i think the first thing they're going to have to do to have any real hope there is really close down the area with aircraft they haven't really made a serious effort there either um it does look like they have a fair bit of uh of aircraft at bangkok i i would hope those 73 aircraft aren't auxiliaries or not hope i would assume so maybe some of those are bombers and fighters about 50 fighters and 40 bombers. They've got a lot more at Singapore. They've got over 100 fighters and 200 bombers there, according to Intel. And then Palembang has 53 fighters and 11 auxiliary. Those are the fighters who are sweeping over Batavia there. Um, do we see any changes here in China? It looks like some of the troops are still moving east. Based on this dot, at least one of the units appears to be moving west. Maybe back towards Cyan. Maybe they've made the decision to move back towards Cyan and one of the units moving north, perhaps toward Yan'an. So this is their big armored fist in China. I don't really know what to make of... Let me take a closer look. So I'm guessing just one unit moving north. Multiple units moving west. and maybe one unit moving east. So they could be moving the bulk of their armored thrust towards Cyan. Um, yeah. What's uh, Cyan's fort level? It was at four. It's still at four. We've, we've begun working toward five. 
Um, Main strategy in China, I think, remains the same. Hold strong in the center where we've got good terrain and good forts and a large number of troops. Try and reinforce the south to build a bulwark from a southern thrust in through Quilin. And then Cyan has kind of always been like, we're willing to fall back, but we'll hold it if they only go light. But if they go heavy, then maybe we'll fall back into the mountains where the tanks are going to have a tougher time. Uh, the problem with it is the terrain in Cyan and the way tanks work make it much easier to overwhelm those light those those light to medium forts. Uh, we'd be better off with three forts in mountainous terrain that he can't reduce because it's not at a base than four forts in clear terrain that he can reduce because it is a base. So originally our strategy was to hold in the mountains, but then the Japanese under Lodric pulled back entirely, and so we decided, well, we're not going to abandon Cyan up front because that'll just invite... That'll just invite them to come in and, and take an important base pretty easily. So I think we need to we need to kind of take a look uh, at this in a little bit more uh, in a little bit more detail. The dots give you the intel on what direction units are moving. The size of the dot generally indicates either one or multiple units. Um, so you can kind of see that. The dots are really tiny. Uh, I don't even know if you guys can see them on the screen, but I can see them slightly. Uh, all right, so anything else? Yeah, we bombed uh, We bombed Savi. What do they have there? Looks like one unit with 2,500 troops, so probably a naval guard unit. Take a look at the aircraft that conducted the bombing. I should probably stand down these B or P20, P40s. Uh, there's not, it's not worth losing pilots, I don't think. You can see our strafing numbers did go up for some of these guys. I don't know what yellow. Oh, that's white. Never mind. I'm not colorblind. I swear. So you can see our strafing experience levels went up a bit because of that raid, but we did lose two aircraft. Um, so not something I'm super thrilled about. Uh, overall experience went up a little bit, um, but I think it's probably better to return those guys to training for air combat, which is what this orange is largely represented by um from previous turns not last turn but the prior turns again probably not worth losing pilots and aircraft strafing so maybe move them to like a, a an escort mission even though we know the japanese have no fighters there uh, meanwhile our marauders here they were they were involved in the attack as well you can see they gained a little bit of a ground bombing experience for some of these crews which is certainly worthwhile and then our havocs also um Bombed. It looks like one of them gained experience, but nobody gained a new, new level, a new like trait. There, two guys gained some experience. That was about it. Some of these guys have like fifty plus missions, and I just want to. I wish the game didn't count training missions as missions because, um, like I wish training missions did what they do, but it seems silly to be like oh, I'm a veteran of fifty missions when it's like all training stuff. Like that, that those don't count. Um, anyway. Uh, so there's that. Let's see here. Did we, we still have the repulse at Cape Town, right? Oh, no. Oh. That's right. We set up this sort of, uh, we had, we set up a task force. So illustrious, as you saw in the replay, uh, has arrived this turn. So we've got a new British fleet carrier here with 12 swordfish and it should have up to 24 martlets, 12 of them active right now. We added another 12 to the unit to oversize it. Um, to make this carrier a bit more useful because a lot of the British air wings come in undersized, but you can increase them because the aircraft capacity is greater. So you can see 33 out of 33 aircraft capacity used. I guess technically if they were all active, it would be 36, but in any event, um, we'll have 24 martlets, 12 swordfish. Uh, that's a pretty nice little, it's more of like a CVL than a CV by American standards, but it's a pretty nice little air wing. The Martlet is, is a, a, an F4 Wildcat in British service. Then we added the Repulse, which just finished its repairs. So you can see the glorious, the fast battle cruiser Repulse in all of her glory and all of her greatness back from the disaster. Well, not the disaster, but the serious damage she suffered off the coast of Mare Singh. So good news there. We'll also be bringing the Atlanta forward, which is currently at Cape Town the American anti-aircraft light cruiser, uh, and we'll bring, be bringing these guys uh, forward, probably into the Indian Ocean where the other carriers are currently located so we can strengthen those groups. Um, and that's uh, kind of what's worth calling out there. We are still repairing the Prince of Wales, which was also not sunk. Uh, we've switched her over to Pierside, 
um, to see if we can get her systems damage down, get her speed up, and then move her off map. Well, she's already off map, but move her back to like England or the U.S. East Coast for a more rapid repair. So because we've got the flood damage and the engine damage all down to major, if we can get the systems damage improved a bit and we can get this to two hexes per phase, then I think it's it's definitely worth driving her out east. And I think we will get that once we get the systems damage down. Um, so we'll see about that. We're not doing a refit on her right now like a G-Man. Um, meanwhile, Sumatra is also currently repairing. And then we've got several AKEs which we've converted, which are all almost done with their conversion in five days they'll be done and we'll have those assets available to us for bombardments which will be very nice to have the ability to reload heavy guns in in underdeveloped ports oh my god i'm so bad with that stream elements bot i need to change that that link is old um that's all that we've got at colombo at the moment um what else do we have going for us today Got a whole bunch of troops that are working their way toward the map. Um, a subtender at Mombasa. I don't think any of these guys are on map yet. Any of the ones I care most about. I don't see them. Those guys are going to Karachi. So where's the big air group? They're on map in a couple turns, I think. I think it's like three or four days. Uh, is it this group? They will be on map in four days. So they're moving to uh, Karachi, uh, home port bomb, uh, Bombay. So we're moving them, trying to keep them well north of any potential threats. So they'd come off on the map here, way north. Should be safe no matter what. But that's 13,000 men with over like 200 aircraft that are coming in. And then we can just use the railroads or fly them or whatnot to get them to the front line. So we'll have 200 extra aircraft. We do have a fair amount of aircraft at Calcutta right now. Uh, over 285 aircraft, 239 of those are ready. We've got the 27 Lightnings of the Flying Tigers. Uh, we've got about 50 P-40 Warhawks, 20 Aero Cobras, uh, some Kitty Hawks, some Albacores, um, over 60 Hurricanes, over 16 Wellington Heavy Bombers, um, and some Blenheims there. So quite a bit of aircraft based there. We could surge them into Burma if we wanted to kind of cap trap uh, the Japanese there. Uh, we also have another 54 Warhawks of the AV, the other two AVG Flying Tiger Squadrons based out of Chittagong. So we could surge forward over 200 fighters there if we really wanted to shock the Japanese in a cap trap. But I think it's probably best uh, for now to wait for a little bit to do that. Prince of Wales surviving was amazing. Meanwhile, I think I'm going to pull these B-17s back. Maybe move them to Lido. Get them off map. Um, the Japanese had recon over most of our bases in China. I don't want the Japanese to destroy our bombers on the ground. So it's pretty apparent that supply run into the Philippines isn't going to amount to anything. Especially with Japan stepping up their uh, their their bombardment attacks there. Uh, we'll probably just have to write off the soldiers at, uh, at in the Philippines and, and say, I thank them for their service. Um, but uh, I'm going to pull these guys all out to Lido. Not many aircraft at Chiang Mai, I don't think. Let's take a look. 36 fighters. Uh, I would say the main threat for us right now is probably out of Bangkok. It looks like 54 fighters, 40 bombers, so... They don't have many fighters here yet, but it would not be hard for them to surge forward a considerable amount. We've got 100 at Singapore, so that would more than double the, the aircraft in the area. Um, they've definitely got assets located throughout the map that they could bring forward to Burma, and I expect they will in time. We did um, put forth the 1 million supply that we had agreed upon for Hartwig. I believe we put like half a million into Japan. Um, I want to say about 50,000 into Canton, um, 200,000 plus or so into Bangkok. Um, and uh, I can't remember where all the rest of it went, but we did update that. So we're going to send that back with, uh, with the turn. Um, and basically all that requires is a database update to accept the additional supply. And then you revoke it the following turn 
so that it's not like a permanent thing. Um, let's see here. So Savi is in good shape, I think, if we want to land there soon. Meanwhile, we've detected some submarines off to the uh, to the east here of our task forces, which we had moving toward Lasan Island. You can see here we've got a fast t transport group here with some in with an infantry battalion on their way to French frigate Shoals. Oh, actually, they got there, so they're going to move forward to Kerr Island. I want to put troops north of Midway. This is sort of our first somewhat major counterattack of the war. Um, we've got a replenishment task force going, a support task force. Um, with supply to be used for bomb a bombardment group here, uh, which also has uh, sort of congregated at French Frigate Shoal. Uh, I don't see any detection on the shipping here, um, but you can see here we are moving these guys toward Midway. So short-term goal, we are going to land on Curry Island, uh, and we are going to take that. We are then going to bombard Midway into dust by placing our AKEs at Curry Island, uh, or Curry Island, or however you pronounce that, and then um, we will take care of things. We do also have a carrier group here with the CV Hornet, the one American carrier not in the Indian Ocean. Um, and you can see here we've got 27 Wildcats of the F4, F3 variety. We have three groups of, Daunt actually four groups of Dauntless Bombers. Uh, we replaced the Devastator Torpedo Bombers with two Marine groups. So we've really kind of heavily modified this air group. So we'll get over 60 dive bombers plus 20 fighters in just a single American carrier. Uh, and the plan there is to provide support for these task forces with the American carrier. We may sprint them forward to bomb midway this turn um, or or not. I need to think on that. Um, but you can see here uh, the, uh, the, the Hornet is just hanging out here. Uh, Neuhauser, I know you're building a model of her. So there she is in her glorious 1942... Uh, paint scheme of bland gray uh, moving north for the initial counterattack in the Allied war effort at Midway and Kuray Island. Uh, so these two islands I would like to retake, and we've already got forces in motion. So we've got a small battalion that's going to be landing at Kuray. Uh, we are loading up additional forces elsewhere um, at, uh, where are we loading them up? At Helio, uh, where we're loading up a USN base force. We are also loading up a, a battalion of infantry um, here at uh, La Haina, um, and then, or at least a fragment of a battalion. And I thought we had one more that we were loading up. We've got ships on the way to load the 398th Battalion at Luhi Island. And then we've already got one of the fragments that's moving toward Kure, which can then swing south to Midway as well. So we'll have a reasonable striking force of, I think, around 60 to 78 or assault value. We'll take Kure first. We'll use our aircraft to keep the enemy troops in Midway with their head down. We will then use the battleship task force, which was in here, but I didn't really show you guys here. This massive behemoth of World War I glory. This is what all the admirals would dream of. A strike, a strike force of seven battle wagons on its way with adequate destroyer minesweepers uh, on their way. Uh, and, uh, and so they're going to head north. And then we're going to put those AKEs at Kure after we take it in a couple of days. Because there's no troops there, as far as I know. Uh, and then we will shuttle bombard Midway. Uh, into oblivion so that the size of our landing force shouldn't matter all that much with the concussed Japanese soldiers at the base there. Meanwhile, any indication on the Japanese carrier fleet? Well, it looks like we've spotted at least two CVLs in harbor of, of Singapore. Um, and then they still have over 250 ships, including CVEs. I'm assuming Either the CVLs or the CVEs are the Japanese fleet. We did detect all six, or I think we assumed, or, or pretty certain we detected the six Japanese fleet carriers at Singapore. So uh, if, the, if the Japanese fleet's all the way over here, we should be pretty safe for a counterattack east of Midway, especially since they haven't even detected us yet. Um, and uh, and we'll, go, we'll go take a look at that soon. But, uh, but yeah, also appears to be Japanese APs heading southwest, so maybe to Singapore. 
be interesting to see if they launch some kind of amphibious operation somewhere. Don't know where. Hopefully not against Christmas Island or, or, or Coast Coast Islands because I, I want to keep the shipping lanes north-south from India to Australia safe. Um, Anything else? Uh, the bombers at uh, Batavia pretty much all got shot down. We've got B-17s that are repairing. No B-25s here. No D one DB-7 is being repaired here. So our, our bomber force at Batavia is pretty much gone. How many carriers do I have with the BB fleet? Just one. Jack tank. That's just the Hornet. The rest of our carriers are located somewhere off the Indian Osh or in Indian subcontinent. Or did I put them into harbor? They might be in harbor. Yeah, they're at Bombay. So they were sailing off Bombay last turn. They've made they've made port at Bombay, all six carriers. They're going to be using used to shield that 13,000 soldier and 200 plus aircraft convoy as it moves into Karachi. As unlikely as it is that the Japanese could even get this far north before our ships arrive, I want to make sure that we're uh, giving the, them the appropriate screening force. If I make a concentrated attack with my fleet, I'd win without a doubt. Where? Against the Japanese carrier fleet? Probably not. Not yet. I mean, there's a chance we'd win, but the Japanese still... Uh, the primary fleet, even down one carrier, is pretty goddamn strong, and the Allies' experience levels are still fairly low at this point in the war that I don't know that I would feel any kind of confidence in, in a victory. It, it's one of those things that you could get lucky and you could do some serious damage to the Japanese fleet. I've had it happen against me when I was playing Belugan, uh, but uh, probably more likely the Allied fleet gets gets pretty badly drubbed. Yeah, if the, if the Japanese... Well, I guess that depends what you mean by... if they It would probably cost the Japanese the game. I, I don't... I need to get off my high horse because I'm not the one playing as Japan. I don't view the game as winnable for Japan, right? Like, there's the whole auto victory thing where players can try and get three times the victory points the Allies have by the end of 42. That seems highly unlikely like it's going to happen in this game or twice by the end of 43. Probably very unlikely that that'll happen in this game. But I don't really view the game as quote-unquote winnable for Japan. I mean, the game... In its stock form, unless you're playing something like Focus Pacific, one of the mods that makes things much more robust in 41 uh, and gives the Japanese considerable uh, additional strength, but also the allies. Um, unless you're playing a mod like that, where it's like deliberately modified to make things more even in some ways, I'm not sure that you could really say this game is ever winnable for Japan. Like, even the, the auto victory of 42 at the end of 42... I mean, I don't know if that would really trigger an allied surrender or not. Um, it may just make the Pacific War a lot longer and a lot bloodier. So, you know, if the Japanese lose their carrier battle fleet, is do they lose the game? If you're a Japanese player who really likes to be on the offensive all the time and, and wants to, you know, play 1943 like it's 1941... Sure, in that sense, it probably makes the game not fun for you, and, and in that sense, maybe you consider it a defeat. But, I mean, Japan can still do a lot without their carriers. Historically, they did a lot without their carriers. Um, and so I think a Japanese player still can do a lot, even if they lose their fleet carriers. As the game goes on and on, and as land-based aviation increases its numbers, um, naval aviation loses a lot of its... Um, advantages i guess i would say like not to say that carriers aren't important but once you've got like 500 land-based fighters that you know spread out across several bases that are all in mutual supporting range of each other if you don't have a carrier i don't know how much that matters you can still get in and do serious damage on any kind of attack or landing force or anything like that but the game is not really designed for japan to win it's designed for japan to See if it can do better than it did historically, which you don't need carriers to do. And plus, frankly, this Japan has already done that in the South Pacific. Um, they're going to take their historical bases in the Dutch East Indies and the Philippines. 
um, in a little bit. So, you know, really the only place they're doing worse than history, you could say, is Burma, uh, where they're doing a lot worse than history. But they could still, if they concentrate their forces there, probably overwhelm with a competent assault. And, uh, and they're right there, then they've done better than history. And so then I think at that point, it's just seeing how much you can make the Americans or the Allies bleed as you get counterattacked. But with that being said, that's going to do it for this episode of War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against Hartwig. Um, so far, so good, I think. Hartwig certainly seems to be more active. Uh, and uh, I think I've noticed some uh, improvements in like recon patterns and other things like that. Uh, digging through the turn so uh, i think we'll have our hands full before too long uh, he's obviously still getting things sorted we need to use that uh, time to our advantage to resize some of our naval squadrons get some marine squadrons in place on some of these carriers really buff out the squadrons a bit um, as the game lets you and then get some stuff repositioned while also beginning our counterattack at midway so hopefully we'll begin to see that midway counterattack uh, coalesce next turn but uh, next turn is for another time until next time this is the historical gamer saying once again thank you very much for watching as always and until next time i'm out